Hello, welcome to Apocalypse Otaku. I'm your host, Char, and I am here to give you your voice actor birthdays, your adult swim schedule, and some JoJo news. So, starting off with the birthdays, there are none. And also, I have new releases for you. So, next, we're going to go on to the new releases for December. The Well, actually, I should give you the releases for the last couple of weeks. Uh, that would be decent of me. Uh, let's see. It's starting with December the 14th. Fate Grand Order, the movie, Divine Realm of the Round Table, Camelot Wondering. Agitarium? Uh, something like that. Happy Go Lucky Days. Harukana Receive. And this is the actual name of the video. So please don't dock me for this. It's called Hentai Horrors Out of Control. And the next one is One Piece Collection uh, number 28. And this is a combo set and it's uncut. Episodes uh, 668 through 693. That's a lot. Uh, next one is Rent a Girlfriend. And finally for that week, uh, Robotech Part, Part 3, The New Generation. And that is your releases for that week. So now we're going to go on to December the 21st. Um, A3 uh, season spring and summer. Or it could be A31. Who knows? Alice in Borderland. Okay. Uh, High School of the Dead. Limited edition steel book. And ep that's episodes 1 through 12 plus OVA. Uh, next one is Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. The movie Mugen Train, you can you can get it in the standard edition or you can get it on Blu-ray. Personally, I would get either way. Uh, if you get the Blu-ray, it's limited edition. Uh, Princess Tutu's Collector's Edition Steelbook. Uh, Project A Knockout. And then finally, The Severing Crime Edge. And that's it for December the 21st. Okay, and then finally for this week. This is this week's. This is for today. See, girly Air Force. Why? I don't know why you had to call it that. It, it female Air Force. Um, it's Air Force. They're all in the Air Force. I mean, really, seriously. It's not girly Air Force. God. 
Goblin Slayer Season 1 Steelbook Edition. In other words, you can get it and it'll be kind of like a collector's edition. Interspecies Reviewers. Uh, again, Steelbook. Legendary Armor, Samurai Trooper, Ronin Warriors. Oh, I remember that show. That is an old show. That, in other words, when uh, Toonami had started out and my son was like 10 years old, That show plus Dragon Ball Z, um, Gundam Wing, and Sailor Moon were all on TV. They had a block from, for a couple of hours. And I would watch, um, three shows. Oh, I would watch, my son would watch three shows, so I would sit down with him and watch it, because I would watch what he did. And that was Ronin Warriors, um, Dragon Ball Z, and Gundam Wing. We weren't interested in Sailor Moon at all. Anyway... Next show to be released is Robot Carnival 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. <sighs> In other words, you gotta have a special player for it. Yorisai Yatsura, uh, uh, only you. And then finally, Very Private Lesson. And that is all the releases for the rest of this year. Then next week I will have a whole new list for you. And it'll be awesome. So now we're going to go on to JoJo. All right. So, y'all, if you guys have watched JoJo, you're probably wondering why they moved from Hamon onto Stans. It's like, and, and it's like here and here. Hamon used to be the trademark ability of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series. But it was eventually phased out for Stan, Stan's after part two. Here's why. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is known for a lot of things within the anime community over the years. It was introduced, it has introduced new characters, themes, but arguably the most unique thing that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has, has to its name is the ma amazing powers the series has introduced. Unlike most anime series, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has more than just a single type of power. Hirohiko Arakai, Araki, sorry, started out with Hamon slash Ripple when he wrote Phantom Blood. And it improved and it proved to be a useful plot 
device in the early run in many ways. It is similar to the modern day anime powers. However, the focus changed in the later parts to stands. So the big question is, why did Araki stop using the ripple? Sorry. Mm. I needed to stretch my foot out. <sighs> what is Ripple? The Ripple is the power that Araki introduced in the very first part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It requires the user to control their breathing in a certain way, which then leads to the production of energy inside the body as an individual. And this energy resembles that of the sun's rays. The ripple allows the user to heal any injuries and fight against undead creatures, which is why it is heavily used while combating creatures such as zombies, vampires, and the pillar men. Why it was heavily involved in the first two parts. The ripple was primarily used in Phantom Blood and Battle Tendency. The important reason behind it is that the villains in both, both the parts were vampires and the pillar men And since the ripple is very effective against them, it was the best choice. In Phantom Blood, Dio Brando used the stone mask, which turned him into a vampire, granting him immense physical power and made it very easy for him to fight any regular humans. Dio also became the leader of other undead creatures. So Jonathan needed something special to beat Dio. When Jonathan met Will Zeppeli, the latter taught him how to grooms, and eventually he managed to bring Dio's progress to a halt. In part two, Joseph Joestar was faced with the challenge of fighting against the Pillar Men. The Pillar Men were ridiculously strong and they were very knowledgeable about all kinds of fighting styles. Joseph learned to use the Ripple from Lisa Lisa and her helpers. Using the power of the Ripple, Joseph was able to defeat SCDC. And Wamu. However, to beat Cars, who became the perfect being, mm -hmm. Joseph needed to use his intelligence. 
with the conclusion of part two, the concept of Ripple dwindled out. It was used on a very limited scale. But it was replaced by something much better. Stands. How are stands better? Stands were introduced in part three of the series. They were introduced very early on, which gave the fans a heads up that things might be changing in the series. Stands are based on the life energy of, the, of an individual. And in some cases, they also require a great deal of mental strength. Unlike the Ripple, stand, stands offer their users tons of different abilities. Each stand has a unique, powerful ability, which, if, you, if used correctly, can make them difficult to beat in a fight. In addition to the various abilities that the stands grant their users, they are not visible to non-stand users. Stands are on various types, which with their strengths and weaknesses, most of the stands work best in close range. However, there are others that can be controlled from a distance. This gives the, the user an advantage of keeping them safe when the stand fights the opponent. There are also types of stands which are automatic and cannot be controlled, while there are others that change users from time to time. In comparison to the Ripple, stands offer a much better variety, in a sense, better, better fights. The impact of using stands. Araki's decision to change from the ripple to stands and many advantages. One of the many advantages it had that it granted him was that he was free to experiment with the story of Joe Joe's Bizarre Adventure. For the first two parts, the villains were the undead, but he could not have kept using the ripple for the rest of the parts as it has limitations. The ripple cannot break sturdy, sturdy objects like steel or iron and it cannot seriously harm a living being. Keeping the ripple would mean that Araki would have to keep using the undead characters. The usage of stands allowed him to use humans much more efficiently with each stand you being different, it really made a character more memorable. Furthermore, it allowed Araki to experiment more with his stories, which led to some of the series' best narratives. The fights in the series became much more engaging as the characters tried 
to find ways to counter stand abilities. In the case of the ripple, one of users' breathing was disturbed. Once a user's breathing was disturbed, then they could no longer use it. The fights were a bit more physical, but that wasn't nearly enough for the ripple to retain the position in the series. So all in all, Araki's decision to switch from the ripple to stands was an excellent one. What do you guys think? Do you prefer the Hamon or Stance? To me, I've really gotten used to the Stance. Um, I think they're... I think it depends, though, but depends on the stand. But I think they're more powerful than using homo because depending on you know the like I said on the situation, you could really be in some deep doo doo. And now we're gonna go on to Adult Swim for Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Starting at 9 o'clock, we have Futurama. At 10 o'clock, we have Bob's Burgers. At 11 o'clock, we have American Dad. At midnight, Rick and Morty. At 12.30... Aqua Teen Hunger Force. One o'clock, we have The Boondocks. One thirty, Futurama. Two thirty, American Dad. Three thirty, Rick and Morty. Three, I'm sorry, three o'clock, Rick and Morty. Three thirty is going to be Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And four a.m. is going to be Off the Air. And 4.30 is King of the Hill. And then finally, to round out your night at 5 o'clock, if you're still awake, is going to be Bob's Burgers. If you aren't subscribed, please go ahead and do that now. And also, ring that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. And also, give us a thumbs up if you like what we're posting. And... If you have a friend that likes anime or the MCU or both, send them our link. And on that note, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video.